Hello, what's up, humans and freaks? Uh, Boston Lloyd. So Boston Lloyd passed away today, and he was only 29 years old. And I'm making this video. I've had this video in my brain for a while, uh, talking about steroids. I haven't made a video talking about steroids yet, but when I saw the news about Boston Lloyd, and then you know all these other bodybuilders. Over the years, you know, I've been following bodybuilding since uh, the late 90s. And so I've obviously, you know, seen a lot of reports about bodybuilders dying uh, very young. You know, Boston Lloyd was only 29 years old. So very, very sad. So young, 29, man. I mean, a lot of bodybuilders... And when I say bodybuilders, I mean professional IFBB pro bodybuilders at the top, um, you know, professionals that are competing every year, you know, in the Olympia, in the Arnold Classic, you know, in the shows. Um, that's what I mean when I say bodybuilder. But a lot of guys who are bodybuilders, who aren't pros, who are just on the amateur level, uh, have died prematurely as well. Um, it seems that it's hard to make it past your 50s. It seems like it's really hard to make it past your 50s. If you have... And I don't really like the word abused, but... You know, let's call it what it is, okay? There is hormone replacement therapy... HRT, and I've been taking HRT for about two years, and I've had some gaps in the in that two-year period, uh, you know, where I've gone off HRT for a few months here and there be, for various reasons, but HRT, hormone replacement therapy, uh, you take testosterone at very, very, very small dosages, so for me, it's 100 milligrams a week. That's it. 100 milligrams a week. That is it. Split into two doses. Doses. 50 milligrams Monday, 50 milligrams Thursday. You know, you usually want to space it out three or four days. Okay, this is just HRT. Okay. Um, so HRT, you're replacing, hence the word replacement therapy, you're replacing what your body has lost over the decades. So a normal testosterone level, okay, for a, uh, an adult male uh, is anywhere, when you get a blood test, it's anywhere between, on the low end, your total testosterone will be on the lowest end. The lowest marker on that blood test is usually around 200, 250, 200 to 250. The high end, it's around 1,000 to, to 1,200, depending on what lab you're using. So anyway, to wrap it up, Professional bodybuilders have to abuse not all, but most, okay? Not all, but most have to abuse. And I say the word abuse because from the general public standpoint, from the, your average Joe standpoint, it is abuse because hormone replacement therapy is not considered abuse in the general population. But when you start taking, you know... Basically, you'll get people that will argue this, but once you start getting to about 300 milligrams of test a week, that's just 300 milligrams. Once you, st you could even argue about 250 even, okay? There's some HRT clinics that will prescribe 250 milligrams of test a week. Very, very rare though. Very rare if you find that. It's usually 200 max a week, but... A steroid cycle, usually you can argue, will begin around 300 milligrams a test a week. If you're taking 300 milligrams a test a week, you're basically taking the lowest dose cycle, you know, amount. Okay, so a lot of bodybuilders, professional bodybuilders, they take, you know, anywhere from, you know, 300 on the extreme low end. Most don't take 300. Most would take about 500 at the lowest, 500 milligrams a test a week, you know, all the way up to a thousand, a thousand milligrams a test a week, some more, some 1200, some 1500, 
You know, I've heard of crazy stuff, two grams, two, 2,000 milligrams of test a week. Anyway, so Boston Lloyd, back to Boston Lloyd. I like Boston Lloyd. I like him a lot. He's a really nice guy. He's one of the few very, very honest people in the bodybuilding and fitness world that tells it like it is. Now, here's the thing. When Boston Lloyd first got big um, on YouTube, when he first blew up um, and became popular, I did not like him at all. I did not, not him as a person. As a, I didn't have something personal against him. But what I did not like at all about Boston Lloyd when he first came on the scene is he was being honest about his steroid use, but his steroid use was so insanely large. His dosages were so out of this world. Crazy. I mean, dosages I have, I had never heard of anyone taking as much as he was taking. And he was putting it all on YouTube. The reason why I did not like that is because he was setting a bad example for younger people, for teenagers, for for, you know, early 20s people who are just getting into bodybuilding and all that, okay? So I did not like what he was saying and doing, even though it was honest, it was honest, but I didn't like it because it was steering a lot of people in the wrong direction, okay? And I, I just couldn't believe it when I first saw him on YouTube. I was just shaking my head like, this guy, this guy's crazy. I mean, this is crazy, <laughs> okay? And it wasn't just steroids, it was other things. The... the uh, his dosages were insanely high for everything. Growth hormone, insulin, everything. Synthol, um, you know, it was just... So anyway, but Boston Lloyd, the person, really, really nice guy. Really cool guy. Very rare do you find someone in the bodybuilding world that is as honest as Boston Lloyd. Um, so I guess to wrap it up and to, to put a bow on it, I'm going to make some some a lot more videos about steroids uh later on but um bottom line is this they're nothing to be played around with you have to take them very very seriously and let me tell you this uh, here's the thing look at the guys in the 70s even like early 80s okay old school bodybuilding when i say old school bodybuilding i mean like 60s 70s 80s okay those guys a lot of them, most of them, I'll tell you what, they would only take cycles of steroids pre-contest and that's it. The rest of this year, they're off. And when I say off, they're off. Like they're not taking anything the rest of the year. Look at old pictures of Arnold and Franco and Zane and all those guys when they're not competing they look pretty much just kind of like an average guy that that works out at the gym. You know, you got pictures of him on the beach and here and there. <sighs> I'm telling you, man, the the mindset is way different now. When so a lot of pro bodybuilders now, <clears throat> you look at you look at them pre contest when they're getting ready for a show. Yeah, they're they're on cycles, okay, getting ready for a show, but then after the show. And for the rest of the year in their off season, they're still taking cycles. So they're on, basically they're on all year. That's a way different mindset than the old school mindset. Okay. And I think a great example of the old school is Robbie Robinson. Look up Robbie Robinson right now. He's like 75, 76. Would put most 20 year old guys to shame. To shame. And he's 75. See, that's that's the type of bodybuilding that I believe is the right way and the healthy way. Okay? So, anyway, get your blood work done. Get your heart work done. Okay? Because blood work only tells you certain things. You have to get your heart checked. Okay? With a, a, a scan. Uh, you know, a heart scan and all that. Okay. Um, anyway, video is kind of long enough, but I just want to say Boston Lloyd, man, awesome guy. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we're not shocked that eventually his, uh, steroid use and, and other drugs, performance enhancing drugs caught up with him. He, he was in five stage five liver, uh, 
or kidney, stage five kidney failure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I thought maybe, you know, in his forties or fifties, he might go, but dang, 29. So I, it's just sad and, and feel bad for his wife and kid, but all right, I'll make more videos on this later, but I have a lot in my mind, but Boston Lloyd just made me make a quick one here. So anyway, go back to the old ways, guys, old ways of bodybuilding, old, old, old school ways. Take long breaks from that stuff if you're going to do it. All right. Take care.